What's going on guys, it's Clear88 here and I have a video here that I've, I've been wanting to do for a while um, a long long while because basically I'm going to go to Earth <laughs> here, I've earned the right to go to Earth in Elite Dangerous I'm going to explain why I needed to earn the right and I'm going to explain the journey we're going to actually make the journey here in this video and we're going to actually go through a few different things I'll explain about the game, how I feel about it and that kind of stuff because I'm very far into it so buckle up and get ready Now, to basically to earn the right to go to Earth, um, I'll get into that now in one second. The first thing I'm going to show you basically is the actual galaxy map. Okay, you'll see where I am and where everything else is in the kind of world and stuff like that. I don't know where that's pointing at me now, but this is where I am. It's a very very neat trick to grinding out Federation missions. Now, Federation is the alliance that uh, basically are humans. You need to earn the right to go to Earth because it's protected by a permit and you have to be a level 4 petty officer rank in the Federation before you earn that permit and then you can finally visit Sol, the solar system that we all live in here with Earth and stuff like that. So it's a, a trophy related to that and that's obviously why I'm going for, for the Platinum. I'm going to be able to show you here. I am going for Platinum on this game. It's going to take hundreds of hours. It's probably going to take 200 hours at least more. Yeah, I'm doing PvP with a good group of guys. Um, and I'm doing all the single player stuff by myself. But there's a few. it, it asks you to go a few uh, different places. Uh, that's the center of the galaxy which I'll show you. And I really hope I'm going to make a video where I'm, I'm going to be going through there. But um, it's basically below that. You have to visit Sol just the solar system we're going to go into it and we're going to check out a few different places in um, we're really looking forward to doing this because i played this game on pc um, and i really really enjoyed it and then it came to playstation 4 uh, i only played a few hours on pc only got into it maybe about 20 or 30 hours and it's came to playstation 4 here now and has trophies so i've thrown myself straight into it and i absolutely i absolutely love it now like in my PC playthrough, like I said, I only play about 10 to 20 hours. I only kind of, it's got a really, really high learning curve, a massive learning curve to it. Uh, it's, really, it's not something someone could just take on. I think uh, you have to really, really put in the effort to learn how to game to get the enjoyment out of it. I think I did that on PC with learning how to fly and land and the systems and stuff like that, but um, like I've really put in the effort here on the PlayStation 4 and I'm quite rich and stuff. Well, relatively rich. I've made a 100 million, you know, so, and like on the PlayStation, or sorry, the PC version, I definitely did not make even two or three million but um this is i the system i'm currently in there's a really really cool grinding trick that you can do between these two systems back and forth very easily to grind up the federation ranks and that's what i did and i just that's basically what i've done right here now so i've earned the right to go to sol uh which is shown here on my left hand side here now because i'm basically the petty rank officer here as in the federation so before I show you like Sal and everything that we're going into, I wanted to show you guys exactly the world here, and this this will just put in context our our actual universe here that we're all into essentially. So, essentially, this is our galaxy. Okay, this is the Milky Way galaxy, and it's centered around a black hole. That's Sagittarius A here in this, and this is all actual. The, from what we know um, relatively information and into a galaxy so this is one of our galaxies and you may know the Andromeda that's our closest galaxy but this is one galaxy here so you can see this is the bubble where they like to say that the bubble exists of uh, discovered space among since the game has started because all this space out here hasn't even been discovered by a lot of different people there's a trophy related to Finding a, being the first of your name to discover a star, so I'm really looking forward to joining that. But you just have to go way, way far outside the bubble before you're going to go to that. And I'm going to need to do it anyway because I need to get to the center Sagittarius A up here. But, um, this may look like really, really small or something like that to you here now, but I'm going to sh show you the real scope and the real depth to it here. So we're going to go straight into this galaxy here now, uh, where I am at. Well, I'm not here, but that's all. Okay, so we'll go here. So we'll see all these points of lights are basically different places you can go, and you can plot a route to. Now, all of these places is exactly like Sol is, which is basically a solar system, which is a sun with planets that could be orbiting around it, any amount of them. Sometimes it's just a lone sun by itself, and other times it has a full-on 
solar system like ours with like loads of different planets and all that circling around it. But each one of these points of light here is somewhere you can go. So you can see if I look around here and I just scroll around here, you can see there's a lot of places. You can see in the background there's points of light, and that's a lot. That's the same if you go up. There's a lot there. And if you go down and side to the left, anywhere, it's all different colors, all loads of places. Now this may look like a lot here now, but if you zoom out and you see them, all those points of light here, you see even just in this tiny region, it's got a massive, massive amount. So we'll go back all the way out here now. This is only out on the very, very edge. This is actually where we are in the Milky Way as well. This is where we're located. And if we go straight into where Sagittarius A is, like somewhere around here. It even takes a few seconds to load up everything, honestly. So I may be too low here now in the scope. Oh, here. So we'll go a bit closer to the center here now. And we'll zoom in on somewhere like here. Now you can really see the density of stuff here. So let me just try zoom up and go in a little bit further. And now you kind of get a scope. This is this. Like nobody's been to these places. They haven't named them. So we go in further and further and further. We might get to a place where, yes, we're getting there now. Where we're getting names <laughs> now so that's how far we have to go down to get names so now we kind of get to see the grasp of how dense it actually is now all these are places that you can actually go i could bookmark that location and i could charter a route to it i'm not going to do it i'm going to need to do it but i need to go in to the very very center that's uh, if i go up you'll see all these look and uh, it just keeps on named and named and just loads and loads and loads. All these are not just one star, like I said, these this is solar systems so that would they would be filled with planets and stars and life and other people. Definitely hundred percent, that's what I believe. It's impossible not to because when I showed you all this This is all just of one galaxy. And what we see when we look up at the sky is other galaxies. So all the stars that we see and or some of them are the stars that are around us here now when you go actually into Sol and you can go to visit them like Sirius and Alpha Centauri but like anything like Andromeda and all that they're other galaxies and all the really deep far stars that, sorry deep deeply far stars that are out there that we see in the night sky are other galaxies not actual stars so it's pretty mind-boggling when you think that the universe is infinitely as big with filled with all this and it's just infinite possibilities and stuff like that. That's why I really like these type of games uh, and I really like this game in particular. I've tried to play other games like this game and they weren't quite as good um, unfortunately but uh, this this game for me really really satisfies uh, the craving and the itch. For now we're going to go back to this network where we are. We can see the kind of spider network uh, roots once we're in here now. Um, I'm just gonna use this quick menu to go back to where I am. And we'll do a search. I'm gonna go to Sol here. Which I think should already be marked out. So we're gonna plot the route again. Now I have a upgraded ship that can go pretty far. When I started you can only jump like between one or two systems at a time but I've jumped this up here now so that I can go between a lot of jumps. It's still going to take 20 individual jumps to get back to Sol, to the solar system from my grind point here that I found. I'll also show you the bubble actually. Once I get out of this station I will uh, show you the bubble. Oh, someone's getting... Someone messed with the fucking rules, man. <laughs> oh, not me. Whoa. 
I'm unsure who's AI and who is actual people. I don't think an AI would screw up like that in the in the airport, so I think that was actual person. Now just before we head off here now actually into the uh jump system I wanted to show you that bubble, like I said. Well apparently what the bubble is in uh of people from the known solar system here, or sorry, the unknown galaxy. We're going to power play. So that's the bubble. That's the human bubble. I'm even just a bit outside of it, apparently. But people have come out here because they discovered it and stuff like that. But this is the bubble of influence where there's like lots of different factions and you can level up different factions. Like I said, the Federation is one of those factions. They're human. Um, but this is what they call the bubble um, among the entire... Galaxy. So it's pretty crazy, honestly. Um, I can't wait to go and make the video of me going through the center. Apparently, even with the most upgraded ship, which I definitely won't have at the time, it takes eight hours to get there. Okay. Now, obviously, I'm going to edit that. I think I'm going to edit a lot of that video down. But, um,. There's also debates on what you want to do when you want to come back as well. So some people just crash their ship into the black hole and then they would pay for their ship again at the nearest dock, which it would obviously put it back somewhere here. But what other people do, and which is what I plan to do, is that I'm going to go there and I'm going to scan as much planet as I can in between so that I get my name attached to it. And then when I get there, I'm going to scan the center of it because I get mega money for scanning the black hole, which I'm going to show you here now. But once you do that, you can basically... You have to ride all the way back. <laughs> so that's another eight hours back. To sell all of it in the nearest, uh, the nearest port. So that's my plan. I really, really want to do it. I think I'm going to, it's going to be the last trophy that I get. Because then when I'm hoping that when I go to the center of it and I see the black hole, that, that's when my platinum is going to pop. That is not... Oh, I thought it wasn't going to be there. Sorry. So, there's the black hole there. Let's see if I can highlight it. I think I can. Now I can. Sagittarius A. You can't even plot the route because it just it won't let you. It's 26,000... 26,000 light years. It's looking pretty cool there. Apparently, there's I I still have to you have to do massive amount of research into every area of this game. I've yet to do anything related to mining. I've done a lot of exploration, trading, leveling up, uh, like lo going to different places, making money that way. So there's I still have to do a lot of mining and some combat related thing. And I've been doing PvP as well with a group. But um, apparently there's something called neuron highways where you can like use a star's power to go even further so I've yet to research into that but I'll check it out look you can see how dense it is here around this black hole look these are all places you can latch onto or go to or visit it's pretty mind-boggling but for now obviously we're gonna head off back to first so a little bit about Elite Dangerous, um, I think a lot of PlayStation players have been asking me and the main thing that they ask me is what's it like compared to No Man's Sky. <laughs> I can tell you that from just from my opinion now, no offense to um, Sean Murray and his team because I know they're a small team and they aimed big but it's the way it was marketed and what was actually available at release that so I'm going to judge it to. I know there's loads of updates to the game and it's probably gotten a lot better now when I played it at release. So to me, No Man's Sky is a poor demo version of what's available in Elite. It kind of feels like what a Minecraft world would be compared to like what an actual like action open world person game is available to. Like. You can do the same kind of things in No Man's Sky, but that's it. But everything and everything in in the Elite, there's depth to it and everything. You know what I mean? There's huge, massive amount of combat. There's huge multiplayer factions and everything. As you can see now, I'm fuel scooping here now, so I, like I don't have to stop to 
in a station to re refuel or anything like that. Certain types of stars are just gonna fuel me as I go along and journey along. Uh, it's just the the depth to everything in Elite is much much greater, but it's a huge learning curve in Elite. Yeah, it's really really hard to know what to do. It's combat is very very tough. Like managing your ship, the controls is very very tough. I'm I'm probably be making it look easy right now because I've I've had like literally uh, 40 to 50 hours here now on a controller here now. I've got it really really down to it. And I also like I said I played that on PC, so I I got a lot of uh, my training done kind of like on my training wheels version that on my PC version. Um, but there's this massive learning curve to it, and I wouldn't expect to you to really finally get to know the full game a until after about 20 or 30 hours, and that's just how I feel, honestly. Yeah, we have to put in real time and real effort into getting anything out of it. So it's not a game that you would take on lightly, I don't think. But if, it's, if that's your type of thing, if No Man's Sky didn't satisfy that entire proper space exploration or multiplayer space, dog fights and stuff like that then this is that game for you I would just really really hope they bring out PlayStation VR support I've yet to actually play it on PlayStation VR because the VR still has a theater mode where you can still play games I still think it'll look cool because I can press R here and kind of move it it's not going to be the same but I really wish I, I could move my head like this using a VR it is available on VR on PC um, so the devs know how to do it and stuff like that, they've just been quiet about it, so I really, really hope it's going to be announced, and hope to do it before I earn my Platinum. <laughs> but I've, like I said, I'm going to... The Platinum journey in this is basically to almost master it, so it's it's not something I'm going to abandon after I get the Platinum. I think I'm going to come back to it, because I bought the Season Pass as well, Um there's more content to come out as well. Like, they, some of the content they added with the Season Pass was the ability to land on planets and stuff like that as well, so... I think this might be the type of game I'm going to go to for um, 100% actually, so like I think I, I enjoy it enough uh, to do that. I've gotten a good few trophies already, but I mean a lot of the trophies is a lot of hard work, a lot of hours behind it. But I really really enjoy the game, it's almost like... Like see this here now, it's traveling. Like it's like a lot of people have said it's space truckers. The game, you know, and that's kind of true if you're going to uh, about it uh, from a trading or a space exploration point. But what what the key to this game is like I just love chilling out and I love like zooming in and seeing all these planets and or sorry all these stars and you, sometimes you, you do get to see like crazy planets and stuff like that. I'm actually going to do a discovery scan here now so I can scan and see if there's anything out here. Um, do you be able to discover stuff and all that? I just I really love that re relaxation period of it. And when I'm actually playing, uh, like I'm listening to music or like I on my other computer and I'm interacting with people that way. Um, I talk to people or I'd watch a movie, Netflix or something like that. So it's definitely a game that you can play and then still do other stuff in the background. So you can still, um, like I said, podcast or listen to the podcast or. Like in my Discord, that's where I am most of the time. And we do a uh, podcast here now as well. But, um, there's also, like, just watching YouTube videos. I, d I think I do a lot of that as well. Just kind of general catch-up, you know what I mean? There's a lot of kind of chilling out you can do while also playing and getting this game done. Once you get down to it, like, with the controls and all that, it's actually really, 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 really well done on controller. I am, like I said, I came from a PC from the keyboard experience and... First I struggled, but uh, afterwards, after I put in the time, like after about the, that five hour period or whatever, it's just down to it, you know, it's just really, really is. There's, it's just kind of trial and error, you really have to put in the efforts um, to learn this game. I think it's very, very rewarding if you do. Certain aspects to it I need, still need to tackle, like I said, mining and stuff like that, I haven't done anything like that at all. We're looking forward to it though, <laughs> being a miner. It's gonna be cool. That's sounds wrong. Yeah, you can see crazy stuff like this. So, oh, sh cuckoo. I made a boo boo. I forgot to check my fuel. So I'm really low on fuel now, and I'm probably gonna have enough fuel for one more jump. I think that that's not a start I'm gonna be able to fuel scoop off. So I'm going to have to check the system. 
and see if it's a star I can fuel scoop off. Because if not, I'm going to have to go back to the other one. Because if you get stranded out here, you're stranded. And you have to rely on a community of guys called the Fuel Rats uh, to come and... Come and bail you out. And that's not something I want to do. So there's no... Right, let's zoom in on it. What's that? That's kind of white. That's white you're looking. And what's this one? Shit. I hope I haven't recorded myself being fucked here. Alright, let's just fucking do it. I might have another... enough fuel for another jump. That's the purple one so you can never fuel scoop off. It's only the really bright ones you can and the yellow ones. Oh, actually. Let's see if there's a station here. Fucker. Better pray for me. Uh, really, really, really hope I don't get stuck out here. This will be the first time it ever happened to me in an elite. Normally I'm good. I think I'm looking at this recording equipment too much and I have me blocked out. I have the fuel tank thing so I haven't been paying attention to it. Sneaky. Oh, we're in luck, we're in luck. Hope you will, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, you can redistribute, like, most of your systems. Like, I just put it mostly to systems there, because we're going to need to cool out a little bit here while we're sitting so close to us there. Um, but, like, and when you're in the middle of a dogfight, you can power... Um, I prioritize most of your uh, ship's functions towards your weapons and your engines and stuff like that. While this is actually going on, I'm going to be able to show you the free camera. There's a way I can do this better. That's it. Now. I wanted to show you this because you can see, like, if you sit here long enough, and I have done, because you need to do it as you're an explorer, and you can't do anything in this galaxy without exploring and jumping from star to star. I just chill out and just watch the sun and stuff like that. And luckily, they've been uh, kind enough to provide us with some really, really cool solar flares or some, like, solar emissions and stuff like that of, like, gas. Like, I think this is a solar flare here now at the moment. Um and it's really really cool to look at and even if you go up kind of close to it with your um ship it's really really cool and then sometimes the emissions look really really awesome as well um i'm gonna go up a little bit closer to it so yeah like this and some of the stars are pure bright white and they have like a velvet sheen off it too you can see it's kind of like a liquid a boiling white liquid but um with a reflective kind of way to, uh, way to uh, it's hard to describe some of those stars are like that they're really really cool looking some of them are purple some of them are just white and ones like that and some of them are even dual stars where they're like in a binary system uh, together and like they're being one is absorbing the other and stuff like that due to gravity it's, it's completely fascinating i'm really really into space and stuff like that so I'll, um to play this kind of game and get into this kind of environment and jump around as a sandbox kind of feature to it it's like I said, I've, I've. It's one of the things, one of the reasons why I got a PC in the in the first place was to play these type of games. But to be honest, most of these PC exclusive games that I wanted to play, like City Skyline and stuff like that, and Elite Dangerous, they've all just came to PlayStation Four. You know, and I have the PS4 Pro, and the performance of this is fantastic. Still at 1080p, but it's a solid 60 frames, except for some moments when I'm like loading up the Galaxy menu and stuff like that. But um, I've been more than happy with it, absolutely. So it uh, almost matches to my the performance of my PC and my 980 GTX. So I'm I'm delighted with it. And trophies are always going to win over at the end of the day for me. So the I was I knew I was always going to go for platinum, no doubt. But we're just stocked up in the fuel now. And we're going to start heading off. Right as we start 
getting a little bit toasty. There's just so many systems here, like um, so many different kind of um, things you can do, essentially. So, but this actually has multiplayer in it, and a f it's a great in a system, and it's fantastic. You can form into a full wing, you and three other people, and go after specific bounty targets to level up your federation stats and stuff like that, or just earn crazy amount of bounties, like from pirate zones, just specific set PVP zones. There's a specific set PVE zones where there were like Federation and System Defense Forces. They're all AIs and they're fighting each other and we can just jump in and choose a side and then fight against them and AIs. Where it's just mass Star Wars kind of level stuff. It's fucking awesome. Really, really awesome. If you want to go one step further, you can get a HOTUS control um, for the PlayStation 4, that Trustmaster one that I've been seeing. It's, from what I've seen, it's about €80. Euro. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be tempted enough to get it. But like, you, then you can have a full-on like proper flight control and map the buttons properly and everything as well. There's full-on support and all that for this as well. Honestly, if they announce PlayStation VR support, I might go out there and buy that as well. Because then I could sit there in VR with a, with a HOTUS and just be like... I can just got trip balls as out here in this fucking suns out here in some random system on the galaxy man, don't mind me. Oh look there, there that's the kind of white star I was just telling you about, like that kind of metallic sheen on it. Probably described it completely wrong here now when you're seeing how much of a fool I am, but that's it. You can see how much we lost the jump on one jump, so it was like a good bit so we're going to be mindful of the fuel here now we're just going to scoop whenever it's possible because we still got 11 jumps we're halfway halfway there i should be scanning here because you earn money for scanning and you level up your exploration and that's what i should be doing take a look there's nothing in this system apparently well, there is actually sorry let's take a look at the system map yep yep 14 7 9 First discovered see Jackie Silver. Oh look, that's a cool plan, huh? Why can't I route to there? 379. It's not that far. That's a cool ring planet. A lot. It, there's a lot of purple base planets. A lot of stuff that looks like Jupiter. That's a ring planet of orbiting another ring planet. That's crazy. Oh shit, yeah. <laughs> right, what do I... Uh, what's all? A little bit away from the star before we start up the hyperdrive because it generates fuel and it just causes nightmares. You see, you can see down the fuel, and no, you can't actually because my camera's covering it. I'm an idiot. Sorry. Oh, wait, hold on. Now, you should be able to see a the fuel there, right? And then it says the blue part is how much fuel is going to miss. And I only want to show you that so I didn't look like an idiot in the, in the video. So. Usually once I come in here, you do a lot of this jumping, so I just have a discovery scanner on. I discover whatever is there, and I just jump to the next system. Because these discoveries can get you like 80 grand, maybe. Sometimes if you're looking. I haven't been in, I've been doing that consistently in most places that I've jumped to, and I still haven't been the first to discover anything. So I'm still like, I even went outside of the human bubble of sphere of influence for the Federation and all those trade uh, networks and stuff like that. Out to like kind of the undiscovered land outside of that, but obviously still discovered because people know about all these systems and they told me to go grind there and stuff like that. So you you'd need to go, you'd need to start making your journey towards the center before you get to get to a place that hasn't been discovered. But if the stats are right, then it's less than two percent of the entire our galaxy has been discovered. Cause this shares the same background, universe background as the other platforms or the Xbox. 
I can only see PlayStation players. Uh, everyone's still limited to their console platform, but um, we all share the same background of um, players. And obviously, it came out on PC first, and then Xbox, and then PlayStation. So a lot of those guys have had a lot of time to discover stuff. But it's still only two percent, or less than two percent, of the entire galaxy. So, and that's been uh, like three or four years now. So. stop here and do a few scoop here for a bit. We're gonna fuel a lot. It's, like I said, I oh well, I'm not fuel scooping after this. Must be one of those crazy fucking stars. Okay. Right. I uh, I upgraded this ship. It's a good ship. It cost like five million, and I upgraded it with another ten million. So, and I put the best um, frame shift drive in it, which is basically how far you can jump and other factors like your weight and stuff like that, but um, this, that's the main like jump. So I can jump like 27 or 28 light years, which is quite a lot uh, from system to system. I think the maximum a ship can do would be about 37 or 38. So, hopefully I can fuel scoop off this bad boy. Yes, I can. I like that sound. So we'll do a scan on this bad boy and we'll see what his name is. Check out his stats. We'll see if we can get a bit more fuel per second off him though. 114. Ah, oh, no, go back. You have to be looking at him to scan him. Looking at him a certain way. Anarchy M, Red Dwarf Star. Nice haze coming off this boy. Alright, we're nearly up to max now, 151. Do a turnover. I wonder if I show my arse to it, it was the worst. I think it is, yeah. It's going up quite far, you know. Let's see if we can get a better balance here, because it's really taking some effort down here. I've seen it go up to 160 and still survive, and I saw 100, and that is nothing. I'm not getting much in the fuel scoops. Scoop that bad boy up. Oh, I have to go around the opposite way in a way to get to, get to the galaxy, so I may as well just travel it. Oh no! Fuck, I hate this fucking thing. Fuck. Now you drop into like the slowest speed possible that you go through when you go through stations and you land and shit like that. I'm not gonna get anywhere at this fucking speed, like. You have to wait for the frame ship drive to cool down. Because I went too close, like Icarus. That's the boost, like, look, I'm not going anywhere. Because you can't go anywhere. Because it has to simulate that you're not as big as the sun. <laughs> Which obviously isn't that well simulated. You know what I mean? That looks like something I could influence by riding straight into it, and not as big as the actual sun is. I think our frame shift drive is cool enough now.
I think I'll just go. Dangerous exhaust there again. There's a nice spur. Look at this thing, like. Oh no. I'm an idiot. Who's Wang Po? <laughs> fuck. Who the fuck named all these things? They must have just had a, like, a random name generator. There's no way somebody actually sat there and named their all these. Sort of really awesome places, like I think everywhere in the Messier catalogue is in here now. The Messier catalogue is basically just, he was this astronomer in like the, I think maybe, forgive me, it could be like the 18th or 17th century. Have we got a binary system here? Yeah, we do, look. Oh, awesome. We'll get back to him now in a second. Yeah, this is cool. Really cool. This is what I was saying, yeah, two suns. They're eventually going to collide with each other. That one looks... You can see the difference in between them as well, so... I don't think I'm fuel scooping. Oh yeah, I am. May as well be. Although I think I'm going to generate a lot of heat between the two of these boys. It's going to go up a lot. There are those other things flying over there, those two uh, white things. They're either AI ships or... They're people ships. I can think and go into the contacts if they're close. Maybe this is someone, an eagle. There's, let's see. I don't think I'm close enough to do a ship scan, so. The uh, Messier was uh, like a um, astronomer and he basically mapped out all these deep points. Uh, to see and observations that are in the deep sky um, that you could do with uh, like a telescope and uh, that's called the Messier catalogue now and it's something an astronomers do where they would like complete the catalogue where they would try see using their own uh, ability to try to map the telescope to it and view each individual item through the telescope and stuff like that but I think all the places have been basically done out like that in this there's definitely a few places I want to go to. I think we're getting really close, five, and we're nearly full on the fuel tank, so we'll probably just make it to Sol anyway, so we're getting close, we're getting, we're nearly home, boys, we're nearly home. Nearly home. Very intense looking sun. Hostile power. Cool. Or jumps to Sol. Or jumps to my feet, in case you're wondering. Is 
There's a navigation beacon. That's obviously going to give you some kind of a mission or something like that, you know what I mean? Um, but we're going to just ignore that. Because that's going to take me down a rabbit hole. I don't want to go down that. Well, let's just... We'll stop off for tea just before we get home, you know? We might pick up, like, you know, a bottle of fucking rum or something like that for those when I come home. You know, space rum. You know, space weed as well. Bag of space weed. That's what we're going for. Weed plants. Look, yeah, weed. Weed. Weed plants. Yeah. Uh, we'll fucking... Two thousand four hundred and something away. Right. Sure, I'll manually fly there. No need to plot. We plant. Right, here we go. I've set the throttle up. It's two thousand four hundred light years. It's gonna take about a minute. Um, and there's no pause in this game, and it's uh, it is online only as well. You can play solo so that you don't play with online players, but I'm pretty sure you still need to connect online to the world and stuff like that. So, yeah, if if you if internet connection is a problem for you, then uh, it may be something to consider. Oh, my jump range there, look, see, 28 light years. That's how far I can go. It's just how you find a crew, like, so that's one of the guys on PvP in my... So... Well, the crew allows you to invite commanders onto your ship to act as crew, or join their ship. As crew members. He could be my winger, shooter, or whatever, you know, and I'd be a dedicated pilot. Fighting is pretty hard in this, even against the AI, you know, I just... I'm gonna have to dedicate some time to it to kind of get good. The only thing I need to do is level up my... Uh, there's a one trophy for getting your combat rank up to expert, which is not... It's only like halfway through the rank system, so which is alright, so... It's like 5, out of rank 5 out of rank 10. And you have to get rank 5 in trade and exploration and all that, but I've already done all that kind of stuff, so... This is a cool little system we're coming up to here now. And it'll give you an idea of what it's going to be like when we come up to Earth, which is literally just around the corner. I just wanted to go stop here, because there's actually a trophy for stopping in 250 different markets like this and selling at them. So it's kind of like a grind, so that I need, need to get through. And that, You can see here there's conflict zones. So they're dedicated high intensity zones that people can go to to fight in AI driven kind of battles and stuff like that so But the, the thing I find that really fucking sucks about that now there's a dedicated PvP er, Combat arena which I go into where you die you just get into a new ship you, you know It's not actually your ship here, but if you go into that combat zone and you your ship fucking dies man You're paying like a million bucks to get it back through the insurance and if you can't pay that insurance You've lost that fucking ship. You know what I mean? Pay 15 million for this ship. Ah, no way. No way, hoes. Alright, we're going a little slow because I didn't pay attention. Usually I go a little bit faster than I curve around. So, what the fuck is this bright light fucking blinding me up here? There's also a cool ring system here, so we're going to land. So I might try turn it a little bit here so I can get a view. You could, like, if I just ran into them, like, you would spawn down into, like, if I had a, I have a mining ship with, like, mining lasers and stuff like that, and you can go down into those asteroid belts, and that's what you mine off of rare minerals and, mere, sorry, rare minerals and shit like that. This looks like a outpost off a planet, off a moon, orbiting a ringed gas planet. You can see a reed plant here now.
Now the one thing you definitely need to do, and it makes it lead so much, much better, so much better. You gotta get a docking computer, because if you man manually dock in this, it takes ages and so much of your concentration. Whereas if you get an auto docking, just decrease your speed, do a boost, request a docking. Once you're allowed, just that's it. You know, you're done. I often check my phone or do whatever the fuck I need to do. You know what I mean? That saves you so much time and effort to actually lining up and doing a manual, like, landing. Just what I'm doing right now. You know? Because I got an email. That's obviously... And they also play classical music, which is pretty cool. Just fitting and license free. Yeah, like I said, I know I'm making this video and I'm talking to you and all that, but just imagine me, I was watching a... Uh, what movie was I watching the other day? Um, I think it was Inception, and I was just sitting here, you know. I, like I said, I often catch up on some YouTube videos through my subscriptions and um, interact a lot in my Discord uh, with the guys. Um, even honestly, if you had a Vita, you could play an entire another game while you're doing this. <laughs> Our port services. So all it is for selling, so we're just gonna buy something cheap, sell it straight back. So I can show you here now really quickly. We're going to status. Um These are all my facts, so market network, so fifty nine. I've been in fifty nine different places and sold to fifty nine different places. So we'll buy this, buy two, and we'll sell two. And we'll go back here. It still says 59. I've seen that happen. So what I do is I did buy two again. And I sell two. And I go back. And it's gone up to 60. I don't know why that happens. But that's why I always definitely do it twice. So 60. So what? 190 to go. Way. So you know the platinum is a long journey. So I have to go to 190 different other systems. You just have to be consistent throughout your platinum. 